Hi guys and welcome back to this series with Plotly. If you are just joining us and are looking to get set up, please visit the previous video in this series where we went through setting up and installing Anaconda, explored some Plotly information, and ran two quick examples just to demonstrate some of the visualizations within Plotly. In this video, since we are ready to start building, we're going to start more on a simple level and then move into more complicated and intense Plotly visualizations. So now we can jump into our Jupyter Notebook and get started building. All right, so we're in our Jupyter Notebook. If you set up an environment in the previous video or you're using a specifically contained environment within Anaconda that you already set up, remember to activate it. Mac and Linux, it's the source activate and then the environment name command. Windows, it's the activate and environment name command. For example, I can launch a terminal. I'd run my source activate, then the name of my environment. That'll activate it. Then you can run Jupyter Notebook to open the Jupyter Notebooks, or you can go into the Anaconda Navigator, find the environment that you're using, select the Jupyter Notebook to launch with that as well. Source activate, Mac and Linux, activate for Windows. Let me close this out since I already have everything activated. And for the purpose of this series, we're going to get started adding import statements for the visualizations. But as a general rule of thumb, when you're working with Jupyter or really any Python file, you always want to keep your import statements at the top just for strict organization purposes, always helps to kind of keep them all grouped together at the top of the file. But here we're keeping things simple. We're going to go down and add a few to focus on one specific element to understand the structure of Plotly. Okay, we have our import statements. You can run the cells. I have these cells already ran. You can also go through the notes. We have our notebook mode set up, connected to true to plot in the Jupyter notebooks. We have our previous examples that we work through starting to understand some of the structure and we're going to get into that now. So we want to, as always, since we're working with Plotly, we want to import Plotly dot Plotly as pi to call it as pi. And one of the main takeaways here from this video that I want to focus on is the building of the structure in Plotly, which if you have worked on Seaborn or Matplotlib already, it might not be too unfamiliar with Plotly. We are going to be using the graph objects and use it as go. We need to understand this and to use this because Plotly charts are described declaratively with objects in Plotly graph objects and dict. Every aspect of a Plotly chart, colors, grids, data has a corresponding key value attribute in these objects. If you want to see this reference, I'm going to jump to the page in a second after I have this import statement. You want to import Plotly dot graph objects as go. And we're also going to be using NumPy, import NumPy as MP. We need that to create some random data. All right, but this is the main takeaway, the structure of working with Plotly and the, the graph visualization here. We're going to take a look at this reference. It's a great tool and great reference point if you're working with this to use as you're building. So let's take a look at it really quickly before we start getting set up with this scatter plot that we're going to build here. Just to visualize this very quickly, we have the Python figure reference for Plotly here. So if you ever want to look up some documentation, I highly recommend it. It's a great reference point. But now let's jump back into the notebook and let's get moving, building the scatter plot. And we're going to set up using NumPy to generate random data. So let's use NumPy here to generate some random data. Let's use 2000 as an example. You can always change it, use the value that you want, we'll test it out later on other values. We're going to move pretty quickly through this because it's a basic reference. We just want to understand the structure here of working with Plotly. And since we're building a scatter plot, then we're going to build a quick pie chart. We need a X and Y variable here. So let's set our example X equals we're using NumPy random with to work with our random data. We need to call it on N. We can also grab this. Let's grab that again, keeping things very simple. Y NumPy random. And we can run this. But one thing I didn't catch earlier, and I apologize, we actually need this as objects. That would be pretty important because it's going to throw an error if you don't have it as the objects. We want to run it. You always test your cells once you run them. It helps keep things pretty easy. We can run it and save it here. And now with Plotly, we need to build and run the trace. This is another main takeaway from this video. One is the Plotly graph objects as go, the overall structure of it and trace trace is the name given to the collection of data along with the specifications of the data in plotly there are other methods in plotly but since we're working with this simple scatter plot and numpy to understand the basic structure of this library trace really works and you will see it used quite often throughout plotly and using trace here we need to actually use trace 
to set up our go since we're using that remember from the graph objects as go the type of plot so you will be using that with the type of plot we want to open this since we're using our x and y we want our example underscore x actually i need to use x equal to our example underscore x and then the same thing for y we want our y equal to example underscore y or the names that you passed in for those variables and we want to finally call the mode equal to markers to use the default value you can change the markers to use other types of border or a line dict but let's leave it at the default and we can run this to make sure everything's good and we can move on to our next cell and we're almost there again this is a simple scatter plot just wanted to take the time to go through it with this we need to add a few last things which would be to set the data and call the plot for the data or the i plot and then use the trace with the data now with that being said let's finalize this let's set our data equal to and we're open brackets with our trace and we can finally call the plot so we're using the i plot we're in jupiter with our data we could run this and we get our scatter plot now we can see we're using quite a few values so it may look pretty clustered with this so let's try we could try let's cut out and use 100 and this is just a, again random data within a scatter plot you can always with plotly zoom into specific points you want to double double click to zoom back out and that's how you do it with the scatter plot that's how you use the plotly graph objects as go you want to use your trace as well and you'll get more familiar with it as we work through and in this second example it'll help reinforce this now i'm going to scroll down and i have this already built in because i didn't want to go through it line by line again where we can actually just focus on how it's being constructed so i have this space down here and i created some arbitrary values now you can add in what you want i just took some expenses as an idea as in rent food bills and miscellaneous we can create this dictionary you can also create the amount so we can also generate different numbers here we're not working with that random data from numpy so we have our groups we have our amount and to be noted we're working on a pie chart here let me add that in actually let me add that in in the pie chart creation let's keep it caps lock let me bring this up and we have the style the colors these are hex values so if you ever want to experiment with hex values you can pull this tool up on google it's pretty useful you can always just scroll through find the hex values that you want and rgb values as well it's pretty useful again if you're experimenting with these colors but the takeaway from this pie chart is that we're creating it in that similar fashion although it's not random data we have our variables created with our groups the amount so the numerical value and representation again within that dictionary to line up with the creation of rent food bills miscellaneous we have our colors styled for each one so it's very simple to work with if you're keeping in order of the creation of the groups amount and colors and here we have this similar setup now with the pie chart we do have to specify a few additional values here but you have our trace being created we're using that plotly graph objects again to call the type of plot we need to set the labels here because we're using labels which i'll scroll down in a second the values with our amount we want to have a hover info that gives us the option within plotly for the label and percentage which i'm going to demonstrate in a second the text info you can also experiment these are some customizations and some parameters that you can get into further with plotly with the size the colors and the color and border I have it set so let's examine a little bit of different border here and to sum it up we're calling the i plot with trace so let me run this and there you have it and a nice thing about this this isn't too much of a thick border here for me so i'm going to bring this back down to three yeah a little different but if you go over this graph it's great because it actually breaks down with the percentage the label and percent values for each so we have our rent our miscellaneous our bills and our food so if you have any custom data maybe you're trying to examine a budget or anything like that you can also pass those values in you can experiment with these as well but to take away again to reinforce this i know i've mentioned it a few times is the main creation here of using trace the go from potly graph objects and to call the type of plot here so with that being covered to this point and thanks for sticking with us 
these were two very basic visualizations within Plotly. For the remainder of the series, we're going to step things up a bit. We're going to focus on more intense and more complicated or more involved plots within Plotly. So we're going to have some pretty great visualizations coming up. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas with Plotly, please feel free to share them. And as always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just a fantastic way to stay informed on what's going on within the industry. All right, I will see you guys in the next video and enjoy Plotly.